As Christian, thanks very much indeed for agreeing to the interview this afternoon. Um, travel, retail and cigars, tobacco being, if we like, a bit of a contentious uh, um, subject, but nevertheless, cigars a terrific premium item. I mean, how are you doing in travel, retail? Well, I'm, I must say, you know, that, that uh, cigars is still having a special place uh, in, in travel retail, although it's overall very small. I think more and more operators are recognizing that uh, the cigar shopper index as well, i.e. he's a good shopper in fragrance, in liquor, in, in luxury goods. We as Davidoff are doing uh, very, uh, very well vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the overall market, I would say. Travel retail, we, uh, we up double, double digits and that's obviously in a category that is flat or down, uh, obviously meaning that, that we are gaining share, which is what, what it's all about for us. And uh, so we actually in a good space for the moment. It's mainly driven by Asia and, and Middle East, uh, but also some good developments in the Americas region. Europe remains the uh, top region in terms of overall business, but also the toughest one. Right. And in terms of um, the name Davidoff, everybody knows the name Davidoff, right. obviously. Um, but there is there is a, a, a real loyalty, consumer loyalty to it. Right. Do you find that um, you can extend that into travel retail in any way? Very much so, and I, I think that the travel retail is a unique platform for us to really reach out to both the business and the leisure traveller that are looking for brands, because airport environments has become more and more branded, and I think you and I have talked before about what is it a kind of journey that I'm trying to lead in the Davidoff company that phase one was about moving from product to brand and phase two of our journey is from brand to experience and I think the retail travel retail opportunity at point of sale the, the retail theater we can do there is very much part of how we can help bringing the brand experience uh, to the consumer and I had a very gratifying you will appreciate this my I have a head of global travel retail I have a head of Amer America's Europe and Asia and we were all sitting together and all of the domestic guys said we need to invest more in travel retail because ultimately the way it's operating today it really does benefit us and reinforces the loyalty when these travelers are back because still we all you and I travel a lot but most travelers still only travel once or twice a year so whatever we build with these guys and girls in travel retails will come back and benefit us domestically. Well let's talk about the, um, the facilities afforded to you by retailers in travel retail right. and, uh, and the quality of or not as the case may be. Right. I mean how do you feel about the quality of um, I mean for instance humidors, proper storage um, uh, facilities and proper presentation facilities. I mean, is it, are we talking about a quality act here or not? Really not. I'm, I'm still sad about seeing when I travel through various airports that they're stowing away cigars in what more or less look like a wine fridge. So I still think there's a lot to do and I think the tobacco category is probably where it, has, where it has happened the least in terms of development at point of sale. And I think the whole walk-in humidor feel, what we can do there, we could bring a lot to the tobacco department. And thankfully, that has happened now in Hong Kong, it has happened in Taipei, it has happened in Zurich. And this week at the TFWA, we are signing, I think, a couple of major breakthrough deals with a couple of other airports in Europe this time. So I think there is a growing understanding that we actually can bring life to the tobacco department because there is a lot left behind to be uh, desired. To what degree do you find um, uh, that, that you're restricted in any way due to anti-tobacco um, legislation? I mean, are there some things you can't do now that you were able to do a few years ago or are you left more or less alone? Or no, there is a lot we cannot do today that we could a few years ago in, in, in certain jurisdictions. I mean, clearly the whole idea of promoting uh, cigars, having podium promotions in Hong Kong, for instance, impossible. That's why we went into building stores. We can still do it in Dubai, we can still do it in Frankfurt. So there is still a mixed environment, but generally, clearly, the legislative agenda is going in the wrong direction as far as we are concerned. But uh, that has been part of our life forever. We are trying to mini mitigate and minimize the consequences and trying to get the message across that maybe premium hand-rolled cigars should be treated differently. One of the things we, we talked very briefly about off-camera yeah. was um, the degree to which 
uh, customers will come into shops looking for cigars, but that they will then shop the store. Right. You exactly. know, I mean, have you done any research on that in terms of? We have. We yeah. have, and, and it's a very important message for us to get across to the operators that that cigars might only be zero point whatever percent of the of your total business, but the cigar shop index is very high in luxury in liquor and in fragrance because if you have spent three, four, five hundred dollars on cigars for yourself, you do start thinking about maybe I should bring a gift home to my kids, to my wife and, and, and whatever. So we, we can definitely prove that and particularly when we have run these big podium promotions in Dubai and Frankfurt, that's where they can really track it as well. So I think it's, it's important and a continuous battle to get that message across and why cigars probably should have a slightly more prominent place in the overall tobacco. Now I know you don't just sell your cigars to anybody. Um, what's the, I mean, can you give readers an idea of what the minimum criteria would be for Hans Hersgaard to walk into their shop and say, "Hey, maybe we'll we'll come and sell our cigars here." What what do people have to do? Well, we basically we are, we are very very clear on two things. You have to have a a, a correct uh, humidor environment so we can keep our cigars perfect. And and we in the domestic markets we have a clear requirement that there has to be a walk-in humidor so people can actually walk in there, feel, touch, and smell. And the second uh, requirement is that we need a branded space because we are a brand and uh, we want to be able to express our identity by a shop and shop or a wall bay or, or a true shop. Uh, so uh, that's really the two fundamental requirements. And in terms of um, true partnerships, if I dare say that, yes. um, as somebody who understands the English language beautifully as you do, are we talking true true or half true or Okay, true. What sort of partnerships are we talking about? Well, you know, life is wonderful. So yeah. there are true, true partnerships and there are not so true partnerships around the world. But I must say that, the, you know, the, the, the partnerships that we have developed with DFS, that we have developed mm. with Nuance, and now Dufree, but, but mm. Nuance before, and, uh, and Heinemann, are clearly benchmarks for us that we would like to see in, uh, with more and more players. But, but, you know, it comes down to personal relationships as well. And, 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 and since we are a small niche in these guys' overall business, we also have to prove that we can become that indispensable business partner. That's what I'm trying to, to drive to, that we can become the category captain, that we are seen as the innovation leader in our category and so on and so forth. And once we get that across and we prove it with what we come out with, we also more interesting to talk to. The cigars is a personal business, isn't it? Yes. And it's sure consumers it's feel that as well, don't they? Yes, they do. And it's, you know, it's such a small... It's such a small business that we should almost know every consumer. We don't, but, but we are trying in our digital strategy and our CIM activities to get more and more direct knowledge of who these people are so we can track them through airports and uh, basically talk to them when they don't travel also. So it's a very small business in that sense. Well, I won't ask you to, to pick anybody out in particular because that would be a bit unfair, but if I were to ask you um, general, in general terms if there were some real quality um, offerings in travel retail that you would put up there against the domestic market um, uh, um, uh, equivalent or ranking. I mean, would you say that there are? I mean, could you think, could you think of some? Uh, in, in terms of overall shopping environment, I do think that that, mm -hmm. that what has what has happened in uh, in uh, not I'm not talking for cigars now because we are exactly. really uh, but but overall shopping experience where we would like to play a role mm -hmm. within that environment. I, I definitely think that. That Heathrow Terminal Five is, is is something where they have where they're getting it right. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, Munich uh, Airport is, is is also getting it it, it right. And mm -hmm. I think although it's massive, I still think Hong Kong Airport and Singapore Airport have a lot of a uh, lot of things going for them. And then, you know, I, I just think that the latest development in Schiphol, uh, what they have done in their luxury corner, and that has actually benefited cigars very much, doing a, doing a great job. So I think. We are coming more and more to a place where it is run by retailers, true retailers, and, and that's obviously what, what, what our future is all about. I mean, anybody who's known you as long as I have knows that you're a natural optimist anyway. <laughs> but I mean, actually, how do you feel about cigars? Do you, do you feel there is a really good future still in travel, uh, travel retail? Yes, I do, but I, I, I think it, it's an ongoing battle because we have to sort of uh, make note of ourselves because we are so small in the overall business. So as long as we get the dialogues, keep these personal relationships, I am optimistic, and you're right. I always see the world or the glass half full and not half empty. So I am, I am very optimistic. The only dark cloud is obviously the legislative agenda that's, that seems to encroach more and more on travel retail as well. I mean, this week leading up to... Uh, 
to TFWA, we had the French uh, parliament passing a law increasing taxes that, on cigars and cigarillas specifically that will double uh, consumer retail price. And that's obviously things that are very, very difficult to know what the consequences would be. But good news it isn't. Would you hope that good news it is with uh, the Duty Free World Council? I would hope so. I would mm -hmm. hope so. I think uh, the more we get our act together and act as a, as, as a uh, united industry from, from all the, the key constituents and players, I think the better it is. But I don't think we should, uh, we should necessarily be over-optimistic about that. I think the, each individual, and I think TFWA in particular, has obviously taken the lead in a lot of, and you know how it is, it's always the same people who have to do a lot of the work. So I still think that they will probably be the drivers here. That, that, other organizations are less, uh, not serious, but less less convinced uh, about what this all uh, should bring. But, but I, I think it's a good initiative and we support it. What about uh, the, um, the, uh, the movement that there is, um, at least in terms of, a, of, of, of an issue-led um, initiative? Uh, to try to uh, prove to legislators that we live in a different environment than the domestic market and therefore should be treated differently. Do you feel that there's, there's um, uh, potential in that future? I, I, I always thought that there was potential in that future. I think it's, it's, it is, uh, it is uh, hampered by the fact that all governments uh, around the world are looking for more tax revenue and for more, uh, yeah, basically for that and therefore the the um, exemption mode, I think, is a little bit on standby for the moment. I think it's a very difficult message. I feel it, you know, I'm, I'm involved in some, some areas in, in, in government lobbying and conversations, and it is a very difficult message mm -hmm. to get across because it's, uh, it's clearly not the flavor of the month. Would you say that, uh, last question, would you say some of the retailers, without mentioning any names, um, have shown the same sort of quality attitude towards cigars as some of those, you know, very, very well-known people in domestic markets that people hold up with great reverence? No, I, I, I wouldn't say so yet. No, no I would no. not. But I, I, I would say that uh, I think there is, because the, t the general tobacco category is under uh, seas or under, under a lot of pressure, and, and we could see the numbers today, overall they are sp playing a smaller and smaller role. I think there are individual operators, some of those I mentioned earlier, that proactively now are coming to us to see, let's see if we can reinvigorate the tobacco category thanks to premium cigars, because there's more of a story, there's more of an experience, there's more excitement to build. And that, of course, is a great opportunity for us, because I think we're the only one with a retail concept that is ready to, to seize that opportunity. So it's good work in progress, but still good work to do. Absolutely, a lot to do still. Yeah. That's Christian, thank you very much. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Thank you. you.